Okay, good morning, everyone. All right, good morning to those who are joining online. Welcome. All right, everyone can hear me okay? Those who are online? Yeah, okay, great. So, um, last class, we completed chapter five, we looked at how we can get started by evangelizing, by asking questions. Then we saw the prayer approach, the two minute testimony approach the power encounter approach where you can just go to people, pray for their need, expect God to bring healing. Uh, that could be even word of knowledge, prophetic word, or a miraculous intervention in their lives, right? Uh, then we very importantly looked at rules, certain rules while engaging with people, show genuine care, right? Uh, don't be judgmental, don't criticize people. Right, the wrong thing to do is to say, okay, this is wrong because of this. Right? What did Jesus say? They shall know the what? They shall know the truth. And the truth will set them free. Right? So as people who are reaching out, ministering the gospel, focus on the truth than focusing on what is wrong. Right? So sometimes in when we look at ministry, when we look at uh, certain things that are happening around us, you see that people are focusing more on the wrong things. No, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. But the Lord Jesus set a beautiful example for us. What did he say? You shall teach them the truth and they shall know the truth. The truth will set them free. Right? So don't criticize people, don't look down on them. Just minister to them out of the truth of the gospel. Avoid arguments, and very importantly, when you're debating, when you get an opportunity to debate with people of other faiths, uh, sometimes it gets into an argument mode. Right now, I've been in those situations. Right, it's becoming an argument. Uh, the the best thing to do is to stop and to just change the topic and be wise in those times. Right, the wrong thing to do is okay. If you don't believe, I'll see you in hell. Right? That's the wrong thing to do. Uh, but it, when, when it's getting into a debate, when getting in an argument, just step out. Right? Be wise. And then don't let other people's negative response bring you down. Right? Now, this is, uh, you know, anything. People can tell you, hey, you don't know how to do this. So what is your response? Yeah, I don't know. So let me learn it. Right? It shouldn't be, oh, I don't know. Okay, then that's my story. No, right? So people will accept, people will reject, people will mock you, but that, that should not stop you from ministering the gospel, right? And then, uh, I mean, when we look now, you know, we have so much of tools, right? I remember when I used to go out when I was a young boy. We only had those tracks, you know. I couldn't take out my phone and say, okay, you know what, you see this, this is what it is, and there are pictures and some verses. But now there's so much, you know, there's content on YouTube. There are I remember seeing this, somebody sent me a picture of this. Uh, you know, one day I was feeling very tired, right? This happened just a couple of weeks back. Somebody sent me a picture of this shepherd looking after the sheep, and it said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's all, right? Now I've read that verse maybe thousands of times. But at that moment, it just gave me such an encouragement, right? So I didn't feel like opening the Bible and reading that time, but just a small picture and the graphics, right? So you got so many tools, apps, and when you go online, there's so much uh, that we can learn, right? So make use of those. And uh, even as you evangelize, uh, let it become a fruitful evangelism, right? Now, doesn't mean that, okay, if nobody's accepted the gospel, it's not fruitful, right? If if you've shared the gospel, no, I'm sure you all are going uh, to a few colleges. Just because somebody does not accept your message doesn't mean it was not fruitful, right? Remember that you are getting trained. You're getting... You are growing into maturity. You're growing into something that God wants you to be. 
right? So go through that preparation season. Nobody can, you know, come and just start playing an instrument. It's not going to work, right? So there's this period of preparation that is involved. Right? So even now, when you when you're going out to colleges, there are times you may feel, you know, tired, or you may feel that hey, this is not working out. It's okay, push for it, right? Because later on, you'll see, you'll look back and you'll say, oh, uh, you know what, I did it in college, and I feel that you know this is something has really helped me to do what I'm doing now. Right? So don't be discouraged when people don't accept. Right? Just continue to do what God has called you to do. Okay. Let's get into chapter six. Chapter six, we're talking about invite and prayer. Now let's read that whole passage. Jo John chapter 1, 35 to 51. It's a it's it's a beautiful example here. The Lord Jesus has launched his ministry, right? And what does he do? The first thing he does is he finds people to join his team, right? That's the first thing he does. Jesus doesn't say, okay, I am come. Now I will do everything. No. So let's read that passage and we see how the Lord Jesus chose the first few disciples among the 12. Let's read. Maybe one of us can read. John chapter 1, 35 to 51. Yeah, 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 that's verse 40, 42, right? Okay, let's just stop there, okay? So we see this encounter. What is the Lord Jesus doing? He's just doing what he's doing. And then the next day, John was there with two of his disciples. And what does John say? Behold the Lamb of God. He's pointing to Jesus. And then this Andrew goes, and he goes there. I like this verse, right? When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Right, verse 50, 38. Turning round, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? Remember last topic, last week, what did we talk last session? Asking leading questions. Right? What is the question Jesus is asking them? He's 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 just going. John the Baptist says, the Lamb of God taking who, who takes away the sins of the world. And then they're following. So just picture this, right? Jesus is walking. Two people are following. Jesus asks them, what do you want? Does he give any explanation? Oh, you've come. What, what did John tell you? John told you to come. OK, come. Did he do all that? Does he know that John told him to come? Of course he would know. But he asked a leading question, an appropriate question. You see the wisdom of God, right? He said, what do you want? And then they asked, answered another question. Where do you stay? It's not even relevant. Is it relevant? It's not relevant. He said, where do you stay? What did Jesus say? You go straight, take a second right, take the first left. What did Jesus say? Come and see. Right? Such a beautiful encounter. And now listen, this is the first time they are meeting. First time. Right? But why is it that these two disciples follow Jesus and, and, they, and they say later on, Rabbi, they call him teacher. They don't know about Jesus. Right? So here, in the first point, we can see that John the Baptist points to Jesus with these simple words, Behold the Lamb of God. Two, out of, two of his disciples followed Jesus only because they trusted John the Baptist. Only based on trust. 
right? And you see why trust is important. You got to build trust when you are ministering with people, right? Last class we were talking about uh, in my in the second years I was talking about pastoral calling, right? And and the pastoral calling requires you to be, give sacrifice. There's a lot of uh, you know a uh, lot of things that are involved. Right? Sacrifice. We need to hear from God. We need to be there for people, right? Now here, Jesus is saying, only because of trust, they're following him. They're following Jesus only because of trust. Right? They said, trusted John the Baptist. John the Baptist said, so they're they following me. Now, when you and I make commitments, right, learn to follow those commitments. Why? Because you're building trust. Right? You know, trust is something that is easily broken. Yes? You, you trust people and then you you give them opportunities. And if it's not, then what happens? Trust is broken. Right? But here, John the Baptist says, Behold the Lamb of God. They trusted John the Baptist. That means what? John the Baptist was somebody who cared for his people, for the disciples that were under him. Right? It was not like, okay, you want to come, come. You don't want to come, don't come. No. As a leader, he cared for his people. He built trust. Now, you look at any relationship, husband, wife, father, mother, parents and children, any relationship, there has to be trust. right? And when you build trust, it's a place where you can speak into people's lives. right? I remember growing up, you know, I would do everything wrong. Everything wrong. But my parents would still trust me. I'll say I'm going here, but they know I'm not going there. But they'd say, okay, go. There came a time when I knew that I'm, I'm lying. I knew that they knew that I was lying. And so I went and told them, you know, no, I'm doing something. Why aren't you stopping me? I said, because I want you to trust me. That's so what my dad told me. I want you to trust me. I want you to have this feeling that you can tell me whatever you want, and I will trust you. Whether it's good or bad, you tell me what is right. And that really impacted me. Right? And I remember that day from then on, I never lied to my dad. Never. Even if I was going to do something wrong, I would tell him the truth. So he would ask me, Did you? Do something wrong and come? I would say yes. Did you go out with your friends and do something wrong? I say yes. But then he had the right to speak into my life. He would tell me, you know, you know, this is this is what it is. This is why you should, you know, focus on your studies for now. I but I would listen to him. Why? Because there was this level of trust that we had built. Right? So trust is very important. Even as you, each one of us, we put our trust in God, we are also called to put our trust on people, right? So you build that relationship, right? You build trust, right? Are you with me? Right? So simple trust. And the Lord Jesus welcomes them and reveals who he is. Andrew was one of them. Now, why is this significant? If Andrew did not trust John the Baptist. Andrew wouldn't have followed Jesus. And you see, Peter, Andrew goes back and he tells his brother, Listen, we found the Messiah, come. And Peter also agrees to come. You see, again, there's trust between two brothers. You know, I grew up with two elder brothers in my house. We're very, 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 very close friends. Even now, you know, my parents say, What do you all talk? For so long, you're, a, you're growing up, you're not kids, but we're very close family, very close to each other. Right? Not a day passes by that we don't talk, call each other. We are in different countries, but we call each other every day. Because there's this, there's this trust, there's this bond that's developed. Right? We're always there for each other. And it happens over time. right? So if you're ministering with people, if you're ministering on the road, you're, you're meeting with somebody, you probably may not meet them again, 
but you've got a friend or a relative and you want to minister to them you got to spend time with them you have to be able to build trust don't expect people to listen to you and obey whatever you say if you are not willing to put the effort of building trust yes why are you all so serious <laughs> It's true, but right? right? If you're able to invest your time and effort into people, they will trust you. Right? I remember calling this one friend of mine. I called him to one of these. We, we had something called as Healing Sundays, right? Like how we call it Supernatural Sunday. Many years back, we had something called as Healing Sunday, right? So this boy was, my friend was, he was always unwell and going through some problems. He had problems in his appendix. Right, uh, and he's not from a Christian faith, but you know he was a good friend of mine. I remember going and telling him, "Hey, why don't you come to church? Right, there's something, there's a healing service happening." But I knew that he doesn't like this whole thing about Jesus and about church. He hated it. But you know what he told me? He said, "I will come only because you're calling me. Only because you're saying come." It's a healing service, I'll come. But after the church, we have to come off quickly. I don't like to stay around. I said, okay, we'll do that. Right? And so he came. And after church, as I promised, immediately we left. Right? A lot of people we, I wanted to meet, but I had to keep my word. I had to build trust for this guy. Otherwise, he's not going to come again. Imagine I came out of church, went and spoke to everyone, and he's standing there in the corner. I've broken the trust because I told him, after service, we leave immediately. So these small things count, right? These small things count. So uh, over time, I was able to call him for many Sunday services and you know worship evenings. He would come, right? And eventually, he began to understand the gospel, and eventually, he accepted Christ, right? But it all came out of trust, right? So that's something that we have to build, right? There are times. We have to develop trust with those who know us. And when we point them to D Jesus, they will readily accept it. Right? Now, for example, if you're playing the guitar, right, and I say, hey, instead of G minor, why don't you play the F sharp minor? Now, hopefully you will listen, right? We'll say, okay, let's try it. Now, what if it's, you know, what if I don't know an instrument, you know it, you know that I don't know an instrument, and I say, why don't you play this chord? You'll say, no, 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 it can't be that. Right? Because there's already a basis. You don't know how to play that instrument. Right? So there are times all we need to do is build trust. Right? Build trust among people. And 80% of the work is done. You're just pointing them to Jesus. Right? Now, let's continue from there. John 1, verse 40 onwards, 40 to 42. 40 and 42. Just read that. Okay, we already read that, but read it again. This talks about the power of a single invite. Here, what happens is Andrew's called Peter, and the Lord Jesus reveals his future to him. You shall be called Cephas, the rock. When does he say that next? When does Jesus say this next? This is the first encounter. After the? After the resurrection. Revelation. Okay. Right? So we see two encounters. Both the times Jesus is giving it to Peter. Right? Now, who knew that this one encounter will change history? It changed history. Right? The reason we are talking about Peter, a fisherman in Jerusalem, was because Andrew went and called him and came. The reason we have the epistle of 
first and second peter is because andrew went and called his brother and came that's the only reason do you think did it did we ever think of it did we ever think that this is going to be the impact of peter's ministry the only reason the church in jerusalem started was because of peter remember in the book of acts peter goes there he stands there he preaches the gospel how many people thousands of people come into the church who started it where's andrew is there a mention of andrew there no but it was peter who started it right so the power of one single invite you never know what happens who you're inviting who you're ministering to let me give you this example i don't know if i've shared this example but uh, did i give the example of billy graham did i give the example of billy graham okay billy graham as a young boy right he wanted to he would go to church every sunday in a small church he was probably about 6 or 7 years old right everyone know who's billy graham right the great evangelist touched more than 5 million souls he used to go to sunday school as a small boy and there was this old man a very weak old man he will come and teach in the sunday school right and there would be five six children there right and he will come and teach and this happened for many years and people would say you're so old now why do you want to do this he said no i believe that at least you know i'm sowing seeds god will use them so in one of those children's you know sunday school meeting billy graham gave his life to the lord right he decided that he's going to serve god now this old man just continued prayed for him all of that he died and he went but we see the impact of what billy graham has done what happened this old man just by inviting this little boy to accept the lord jesus millions of people were touched by his ministry so you and i we never know who we are impacting the problem is we make judgment from the outside right oh this person no, i don't think he can do much or this person i don't think he can do much but that's not what the lord jesus did the lord jesus did not look at uh, peter and say fisherman no 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 i need some well educated people in my team no he looked at peter and he said you're going to be the rock right so god does not look at our weaknesses he does not look at what we are failing at but he looks at what we can be and that's the same attitude we must carry when i look at people while ministering the gospel i must look at them hey maybe this person one day can be a great songwriter or a great musician or maybe this person one day can be a great pastor or he can be a great evangelist touching many lives so what you have done you've done your part sown the seed god is going to make it fruitful amen right paul is writing to the corinthians he says those who sow those who water all are important but it is god who makes it grows right if you sow somebody else will water but your reward is there in heaven amen so you'll be rewarded every person you minister to there is a reward your administrator may not have said very good job your teachers may not have clapped for you your friends may not have clapped for you but there is a reward in heaven right so with that attitude we can minister to people right okay john 143 onwards 43 to 51 extending an invitation to one who's doubtful let's read that 43 to 51 
Jesus has said to me, Before you get glory, here he was at the dark victory in my story. Nathaniel answered and said to him, You are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than me. And he said to him, Most must go to I say to you, on earth, here and there, you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the earth. Thank you, Vimal. Right. So we see another beautiful encounter here. Philip, he meets with Jesus. Again, same thing. He goes and finds his friend Nathaniel. And he says, Nathaniel, come. We found the Messiah. Now, Nathaniel, in the first case, Andrew found Peter. Peter was not skeptical. right? Simon Peter was not skeptical. He was not in doubt. He just said, OK, come, let's go. But here, Nathaniel is saying, can anything good come out of Nazareth? No, right? I don't think. What are you talking about? Right? Now, here's the interesting thing Philip, he did not try to start a debate and try to convince him. Right? He did not say, okay, you know what? He was like this. Uh, he's tall. He has long hair. And then he spoke to Andrew. He spoke to Simon Peter. And then after that, uh, wherever he was going, John the Baptist also told, you know, he's the Messiah. So why don't you? There was no explanation. What did Philip say? Three words. What was it? Come and see. That's it. Three words. What did Jesus say? Come and see. Right. So you see, sometimes in evangelism, it's not only about speaking, but it's also speaking the right words, the right sentences. Right. That's where the wisdom of God lies. And now Nathaniel, he comes. Philip said, "Come and see. See what I saw. I'm telling you. But you come and see. You're doubtful. No, you come and see." And so Nathaniel came. And Jesus begins to reveal through word of knowledge about Nathaniel. I saw you under the fig tree. You were praying under the fig tree. You're a man in whom there is no deceit. Nathaniel says, you are the king of kings. You are God. He believes in that moment. What did Philip do? Come and see. All that he did was. So both, both are important. One, at least Philip went to Nathaniel. Philip didn't go home and say, oh, finally, I found the Messiah. So for me, no problem now. I'll go and join him. No. He went and found his friend Nathaniel and said, come and see. So there was an effort. right? Come and see is a statement that all of us can use. Yes or no? You're talking to somebody, hey, come and see. Right? I remember this couple of weeks back when we were doing faith and science. I just happened to see a couple of young people near the uh, east of Bangalore. So I, I gave them an invite. I said, faith and science. They said, uh, no, no, we are not interested. So I said, uh, it's all about science, or how the world came into creation, and how sometimes we need to have faith in that science. And we need faith in God. And they would say, oh, this is an interesting topic. Uh, can you explain more? I said, why don't you come and see? They came on Sunday. Right? All I said, come and see. Because if I go to explain, you know, the earth was there, the sun is here, and then God, you know, in all his God, you know, he said it like this light came out from his earth. If I explain all that, they'll say, okay. Right? I don't want to explain the six days of Genesis and all on the road. All I said was, come and see. Right? You know, when I was in Mangalore also, many, many times, I, I met this one boy, right? Uh, he, he is a Northeast boy in Kohima. So I went up to him. That time the church in Mangalore was about maybe 10 people right? when I went. Um, I went up to this boy and I said, uh, hey, are you a, a Christian? He said, yes. Uh, he said, you know what? I've just come to Mangalore. I told him, see, I'm part of a church. Would you like to come? Uh, he said, yeah, because I've just come to Mangalore. I don't know anyone. It's just a week now. Where is your church? So I gave him the address, everything. Uh, then he asked me, what are your beliefs? 
I said, see, all that will take some time. Why don't you come and see? So he came on Sunday, right? And after the Sunday service, I remember we were only 10 people in church. He said, can I call my friends? I said, yeah, you can call your friends. Next Sunday, he came with 10 friends. So from 10 people, our church went to 20 people. And those 10 friends started inviting other friends. And later on, I got to know that they were all from a different, um, like they were from the Baptist background. They didn't believe in the Holy Spirit. Like they didn't give, believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, I didn't know that. I used to do all the gifts. Right? I used to speak in tongues. I used to pray for healing, everything. I didn't know that. Right? I just ministered in freedom. But later on, they said, hey, now we know that there is a Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit still works. We have seen it in our own eyes. Now, if I had gone and explained that day, you know, we believe in God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has nine gifts, you and I as believers. If I'd explained the whole thing, I'm, he may not have come that Sunday. Right? So there's power in a single invite. Many a times we've had movie nights. Right? I've just said to people, why don't you come? Which movie? Come and see. Right? I use the same word. Jesus said it. I also say it. Right? Which movie? Uh, the name of the movie is this. What's it about? You come and see. There's this one boy. We play the movie, The Cross and the Switchblade. Right? It's about gangsters and drug addicts and how this young pastor goes to New York City and he begins to reach out, you know, begins to preach to these drug addicts and, uh, you know, uh, gang, gang dealers. There's a book also called The Cross and the Switchblade. So I wanted to play that movie. And so these guys came. And we put the movie. It's a powerful movie, right? But the first one hour of the movie is only, you know, fighting and gangs and drugs and all of that. But in the end, when the gospel comes in, it's very powerful. And I was sitting there in the back seat. We were about 25 people with maybe seven, eight young guys, new people in church. All of a sudden, I'm hearing cries. There was no preaching. There was no teaching, nothing. We were all crying because of the movie. But then after that, of course, we shared the gospel. But the point was, it was all just come and see. Right? So maybe, you know, each one of us, you'll go back to your hometowns, you'll go back to your churches. Use these opportunities. Ask God to give you wisdom, right, on how to minister to people. If something is not working, try another way. Don't say this is not working, so I, I'll better you know, be, the stay, be on the stage only leading worship. Right? No, no, no. Don't say, okay, I'm not called for this, so I will only you know, uh, preach on Sunday in the church. That is my gift. No. If that is your gift, you do that and you do this also. I can worship for three hours, good for you, but also go out and minister to people. But others can't worship for three hours. Good for them also. We don't, we don't have to look at what others are doing and what others are not doing. We are doing what God has commissioned us to do. Go make disciples. Amen? Right? So next one, we already seen that. Realize the importance and the power of a single invitation. OK, here, let, let's look at that. Think of various situations that people go through which provides an opportunity where you can invite them to explore Jesus. One, they're facing a challenge in life. They're asking questions about life, meaning and purpose, right? Or they are interested in learning and exploring. They are thankful or grateful for good things. Uh, they're, uh, and they're open to receiving prayer for some need, right? So in, in, I like to talk about this, right? They are asking questions about life, meaning and purpose. In a day that we are living in now, all of us around us have this question, bro. What's the meaning of life? What is the purpose? Like, why am I living? What is this? What life is this? Right? There was a woman from a different faith who had come to church once. This is again in Mangalore. And she was crying and crying and she was talking to us. She said, I lost my husband. I lost everything. And she was so sad and bitter 
she tried everything possible i realized at that time me sharing the gospel is not going to work out right now right i i can't just say okay don't worry jesus will comfort you and give you peace no she's lost she's grieving she's lost her her husband of many years whom she has loved and now she's alone she doesn't have anybody in her life and her in-laws are treating her bad and all of this so i can't just say okay don't worry jesus will make everything right he will but then it's not going to be so much of a effect in her life so i remember telling her why don't you come on sundays instead of sitting at home and just crying and weeping come here nobody is going to judge you nobody is going to ask you anything come sit and you go so she said okay i'll come so first couple of sundays she came and she would finish service and she would go away so nobody asked her questions i told the church also don't ask her any questions don't ask her where she's going why she's coming all of that just so she came a couple of sundays three sundays one month and then i noticed that she would stay back after church she started talking to people in the church okay i didn't say anything huh? i didn't say why don't you fellowship nothing then i started noticing she's giving tea to everyone started serving in the church then i'm seeing she's you know setting up the chairs wiping the chairs and you know many times she came up to me and said if i leave this place the church i feel hurt i feel broken but when i'm in this place right there's something that is different here i don't i don't feel pain i don't feel anything right i feel the peace of god right but I mean, we never shared the gospel nothing but this is what she said right and then i was able to use this as an opportunity to minister to her right no asking questions no asking why you know you have to believe in jesus or no right so there, there are ways to handle people right so she was asking question about life she was suicidal she had no purpose in life but now right she has purpose she has meaning she feels okay god has called her for something and there's some kind of a joy that's there in our life so there will be people who are coming in walking into your churches into your ministries this way do not judge them or criticize them don't look at people and say hey you're not lifting your hand in worship what are you doing no right leave people as they are let them be as they are let the lord minister to them I, yeah there are times when we have to share we have to share our experience but don't force or don't manipulate people right especially in ministry especially when it comes to evangelism right then you can think of uh, events you can think of small groups movies sunday nights good friday easter christmas all of these sundays that you can invite people and just say come and see that's all they have to do and they can experience the presence of god right think of various conversation starters right what is conversation starters what's the meaning of conversation starter now if i'm meeting somebody right and i know this person is interested in something or you know it's just just somebody uh, who i don't know as well have conversation starters right hey what do you like to do in your free time they'll say i like to read so you say hey, you know have you heard of this book right or they'll say i i like to play music okay oh if if you don't play an instrument you can say hey even i like this instrument maybe i also should learn i'm thinking of learning right or they like to you know play football or anything right have conversation starters hey what did you do when you were young right what what was it what did you do on sundays or oh, we used to get up late then go and play and then you know in the evenings we used to have family time right now if he asks me the question i'm hoping they'll ask me the question on sunday or oh, sunday we used to go to church in the morning and then we would stay there the whole day finish lunch church so you waste your whole sunday in church I said yeah it's not a waste but this is what i do in church it gives you an opportunity Right. what is it conversation starters you're not talking about jesus died on the cross he rose again from the dead nothing 
it's just conversation starters simple points right there was this one person it started off you won't believe this one person one of my friends right he loves geography right geography and history is his thing right so he would always say man one day i want to go to europe right he used to always tell me that i want to go to europe i want to tour europe okay how do i get this guy when he was reading the book of acts everyone are in europe only over there there's greece there so i said so i remember i said god how do i put across to this guy I said hey you wanted to go to europe no you should go to greece you should go to athens you should go to corinth what is all these places he asked I said you haven't heard of these places so i said go get the bible and come no i didn't do that <laughs> okay i open i open google and i said oh and i purposely put co co corinth right and i said see these structures you know i showed him pictures of corinth it's a beautiful place they had these uh, huge stadiums where people will watch fights and all of it all history and geography we spoke for more than 2 3 weeks only history and geography right i got him fully excited on that next thing i said do you know what happened during those times brought in the gospel okay so it was not about uh, you know jesus was there he did this no it was simple geography and history right it just brought in the gospel so have conversation starters now when you go on the street and you're evangelizing don't just smile and tick go go next <laughs> don't do that or sometimes i've seen you know some of they're giving like this scene somewhere else where are the cops no <laughs> right <laughs> why do i come talk to them right don't get scared i don't give the invite and say okay take fast and go fast <laughs> oh you can do 100 like that but do one which is fruitful that's better that's or no i right? say so i have conversation starters and i remember i used to go to this these colleges and all i used to sometimes stand there i used to say now what i'm talking no why i'm saying all this is because i've done it it's not like i'm just saying because i want to say it right it is the fourth or fifth year i'm teaching this you know why because i've done it i used to do a lot of uh, evangelism so what i'm trying to get at is uh you know have these come when i was in call when i'm outside college say hey what exams are going on now they're not going to say no who are you don't talk to me will they say that will they say that no say, exams are going you say yeah yeah exams which subject what what what's your course you have taken bbm oh bbm i have taken bcom so you have marketing management and all you're just talking okay <laughs> and so you got two minutes the first 30 seconds counts so he's going to stand and listen to you say hey you know what uh if you got 2 minutes can i take 2 minutes of your time sometimes they'll say no and walk off but don't go home and keep crying okay do something about it go to the next person right continue okay <laughs> yes or no okay so it's okay it's okay to you know don't be successful at times it's okay when things don't work out don't cry crying is for babies you all are grown up okay right if things don't happen also move on look at yourself and say okay where does god want me to go from here what should i do next right crying is not going to resolve the problem you'll only get issues that's all but the point is are we growing in the lord right so that's what we want to see inviting people there are so many ways but what holds us back we looked at inhibitions also sometimes we are too conscious and we don't invite people remember that you're not inviting people to yourself you're inviting people to christ sometimes we may face rejection they may say no so then we don't uh, you know invite people oh this is very nice sometimes we perceive things differently and we compartmentalize our life isn't that true we make our life into compartments monday to wednesday by bc student thursday and friday some other student saturday and sunday some other student 
No. Who you are is who you are. Let people see them who you are. Right? And so when you're genuine about something, that's when people will receive you. People will accept what you say. Right? If you say, okay, hey, you know what? I saw you. You said you're a, a believer and all. But last time I saw you, you were, uh, you know, involved in all those fights over there or you're involved in all these things. What do they say? Hey, that is Sunday I'm at church. That is uh, Monday. Hey, I've seen you, you know, you're, you're doing all uh, all these, you know, you're, you're watching all wrong things. I've seen you. That is on Wednesday. Mon Sunday, worship leader and prophet. Both I am. Don't compartmentalize. Who you are Monday to Friday should who, what you should be Saturday and Sunday. Okay? Yes? Right? Every day, be who you are. You don't have to prove anything to anybody. The moment you prove trying to prove something, it's already a failure. Be who you are. This is who I am. This is what I will do. Now don't say this is what I will do and then stand there and do nothing. Okay, you need to grow, right? You need to develop yourself, right? But be genuine in what you're doing. Right? Jesus says, no, don't be like the Pharisees when they when they come to the corner of the road, there only they're praying. And the, when the people leave, they finished praying. There's no need to show anything, is what we're trying to get at, right? When you're genuine, people will notice it. Right? And you have you will gain the ability to speak into their lives. All you need is to show genuinity, right? Sometimes we are afraid we don't have all the answers, so we don't have, so we don't answer their questions. So we feel okay, no need to invite them, right? Remember that we are also regular people. We are also learning, and so it's okay. It's okay when we don't know all the answers. Sometimes we are too worried about the church service. What if it's not relevant? Faith and science, sir. No, I'll call them for supernatural Sunday. Faith and science, sir. Sometimes you think, okay, the service may not be good. But you never know what can touch, what the Holy Spirit can use to touch a person. It can be a PPT. It can be somebody who's greeting in the welcome lounge. It could be somebody who's just serving tea. It could be one word in that sermon that has touched a person and can change their lives. So, so don't feel that, okay, uh, maybe I'll invite them next series or next... Invite them. And the Lord will do what he has to do. Right? Worship is going to be there. Word is going to be there. And let it minister to people. Right? How do you make the invitation for someone to come to church? Important. Be simple. Be truthful. Be inviting, not coercing. That means don't force them. First one, be simple. Don't say, you know what, uh, I want to invite you to my church. First, we were 10 people. Then from 10, we became 500. From 500, we became 800. We have a big screen behind. It's video recording also happens. You come and see. You know, all that. Come to church. That's it. Let them see what they have to see. Right? To be truthful. Tell them it's church. Don't tell them it's a club. It's a church. This is what we do. And you be truthful. Be inviting, not coercing. I just say, hey, I leave the choice to you. Uh, so that you know it will impact your life. Make that invitation and uh, and explore Jesus to explore Jesus, and then you pray for them. Go back home and pray for them. God, I've given them the invitation. Holy Spirit, you minister to them. You make them come. Right? I'll just send a message. Hey, hope to see you on Sunday. But you make them come. When you do it, things will work. Right? So you pray for them. And uh, finally, just two more minutes. Oh, we're almost done? Okay. Just that last page. After their visit to the church, help them to process what they've heard. Right? Maybe it's a difficult message. Help them process that. Help them to connect with the church community. It could be connect them with a small group. If they like to serve, help them to serve in the volunteer team. Why is it that all of you are serving in the volunteer team? Not because, okay, you want to do it. Because it's good to serve in the church, right? You're getting connected together. Uh, continue to invite them. And if they have made a decision for Jesus, then work with them 
on helping them grow in their faith, right? Teach them uh, foundations, worship, give them Bible verses, small things that can help them to grow. Is that okay? Right? So even this week, even as maybe some of you may be going, right? Try that out, right? Try to ask good questions. Try to be relevant and uh, go there prayerfully. God will definitely open doors and answer you. Right? Right. All right. Thank you so much, those who are online. Have a great week. I'll see you next week. Yeah. God bless you all.